What's up, everybody, and welcome to ITG Daily, the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news. I'm Drew Bosley. That's the one and only Scott Savage. Scott, what's going on, man? Oh, I had a lot of fun remodeling my whole situation <laughs> here. We're still not done yet, but always upward. Uh, onwards and upwards, just like ITG Daily, where you can join us over on YouTube.com slash inside the game official as well as twitch.tv slash the official itg but if you can't join us when we're live hit us up later inside the game.ca podcast services thanks to our friends over at fired up network and those beautiful tv streaming platforms around the globe roku amazon prime estv game plus the list goes on and on and on jinx tv is another one don't forget about us over there man we got a couple things to talk about later on uh we'll get to those another day scott Always onward, always upward. <laughs> that's that's just it, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, the things we're cooking up right now, can't wait to talk about those. But for now, let's talk about today's show, where we're talking about a whole lot of games, as Quantic Dream's Star Wars Eclipse title appears to be targeting a 2026 release window. Yeah, not surprised. CD Projekt Red discusses the launch of Cyberpunk 2077, and your PlayStation VR 2 could work on your PC? We'll talk about that one as well. Mm. We'll see how that one goes, Scott. I don't know. Yeah, well, we'll talk about it. Let's get over to Tom Henderson and over to Insider Gaming as Star Wars Eclipse is targeting a 2026 release date. Insider Gaming sources have revealed that Star Wars Eclipse, developed by Quantic Dream, is targeting a tentative 2020. Tentative, Scott, is the keyword there. 2026 release date, <laughs> but it could be delayed further. I would not be surprised for one second if we don't get that until 2027. Man, that feels so far away, though, doesn't it? It does. But with the length of game development, though, is 2027 viable? Uh, 2026, 2028? New generation of consoles. Time will tell. Yeah, the news... Everything slides around nowadays. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah well, absolutely. The news comes from a, the same source that revealed Chinese tech giant NetEase would be acquiring Quantic Dream six months before it was officially announced. Well, there is that as well. Sources once again restated Quantic Dream's struggle of hiring staff following allegations of workplace issues, including sexual harassment, crunch, and toxic work culture. Scott, right there goes, I don't want to work there. <laughs> That's just no. 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 <laughs> That's unfortunately in a long list of embroiled studios. Yeah, yes, it, they do join a long list of other studios. It's understood that due to the scope of the Star Wars Eclipse, and alleged issues of hiring staff, the game could be delayed further from 2026. Because of such date targets, Eclipse is likely the most far out Star Wars game that has been announced. So far, there are six Star Wars games in development that are yet to release. Star Wars Eclipse is described as a new action adventure, multiple character branch narrative game set in the High Republic era of the iconic Star Wars galaxy. Now early in development, it was announced in late 2022 scott um six titles in development star wars eclipse one i was when i when we saw this reveal again cinematic reveal right no gameplay no nothing just a cinematic teaser saying hey we're working on this i'm a big fan of what quantic dream develops from heavy rain into uh detroit become human these branching storylines are so well crafted that every time I play them, I'm just like, wow, man, like another immersive, extraordinary experience. But the fact that we're going to be, dude, I bet you they don't even get it in 2026. I don't think we see this until 2027, 2028 at this point. No way, but this is ambitious. Like you say, being Quantic Dream, I expect it to have a lot of heavy impact, a lot of emotionality to it. And that's going to yeah. be a really delicate thing to craft. Especially in the Star Wars franchise, right? Everybody knows Star Wars in and out and followed it for so long. And just there's such a fan base around that. You have to be careful because we don't want something that's not going to feel Star Wars. When we just recently had Star Wars Jedi Survivor, dude, so many of us love that game, right? It was so, so well done. And there's a lot more to kind of take into what's coming around the corner for Star Wars. But six titles, Scott, are we going to get Star Wars burnout by the time this thing actually arrives? Oh, this being a little bit delayed might actually be beneficial if for that reason alone. <laughs> Just yeah. because, is that too much Star Wars? We went through a long period where I felt like there was very little Star, Field, or Star Wars relance, rela releases. I'm losing my <laughs> speech. <laughs> no, it, it was sporadic there for a while, right? We haven't seen anything. We had Star Wars 
uh, the Force Unleashed way back when. Like, it was, like I'm oh, talking, that's even right? even way like, further back way than further. I was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> but then from there, we what have we really had as of late? We had the Battlefront series, right? And then yeah. from there, I was get Battlefront and Battlefield mix. But yeah, Battlefront, we've had one and two, and then we've kind of tapered off. And then we get Jedi Fallen Order, and now we have Jedi Survivor. And then like, what's next? And man, there's so many other games that are apparently in development. I'm anxious to see. But as well, when you talk about the TV crossover too, dude, we've had a lot of that with Andor and uh, Mandalorian and things like that. Even Boba Fett yeah. having his own spinoff. So I still haven't seen. Uh, I've only seen a little bit of Mandalorian, oh. and that's all out of those three. Dude, and I know so I'm good. So far behind. Oh, you were way behind, but you got lots of time to catch up still. Uh, not really, because <laughs> there's too many games to play. Dude, let's get into this one because this is an interesting topic here. It was cool not to like it. CD Projekt Red, VP of PR, believes Cyberpunk 2077 was unfairly dunked on at lunch on launch i are you serious <laughs> serious oh. and uh, and at lunch and everybody's at lunch, lunch for yeah. about a year <laughs> connor mccarr over vg247 mikhail Polak gilwinski the vice president of public relations and communications at cd project red has stated he believes it became quote not uh, cool not to like end quote cyberpunk 2077 at launch in spite of vast technical issues and controversial practices with review copies um that's, yeah, a, that, that's go ahead. a big one well <laughs> that very last bit there controversial practices with review copies that that's something that we're seeing happening uh, a little bit more often as time goes on and it's insane to me well, we experienced it too when we had our review copies come in. The funny part was they didn't come in until like right at the deadline, which is normally a sign of two things. One, the game isn't ready, which in this case, Cyberpunk was not ready. Clearly not ready. It wasn't mm -hmm. that it wasn't cool not to like it. It was just nobody liked it because, well, people liked it, but they didn't like it because it wasn't finished. Even the developers mm. themselves working at cyber working on cyberpunk said that the game wasn't ready for launch. We clearly saw it. We clearly saw the state, man, this is, this is a weird statement, Scott, <laughs> because PlayStation themselves pulled it off the store. Right. Yeah. And I think that kind of verifies what everybody was saying more so than just uh, an internet forum. I can understand a bit of that pile on. There was dogpiling happening. We can't say there was not. No, but for was sure. it warranted? In my opinion, it was absolutely warranted. Well, and that's the thing. It was warranted, right? When you saw the critical reviews come out, you saw everybody, you saw us complaining about the game, the state of the game, and then two years go by, right? Two years of patches, fixes, and so forth, and then that is the game that should have launched at launch, Scott. The one that was repatched two years later. It was almost like a brand new cyberpunk. And then we're getting into Liberty phantom liberty which is the latest dlc coming out in september which is revamping their entire system once again mm -hmm. so his statement saying that it was cool not to like it is because it was broken there's so many mm -hmm. issues at launch like it wasn't just cool not to like it it was just not to like it because it didn't work that's the problem yeah there was it was absolutely um verifiable and objectively not ready to go it, this isn't a case of claiming <laughs> what I'll claiming what I'll call the Nickelback defense doesn't really get <laughs> rid of the valid criticism there was. No, absolutely. This quote and additional thoughts from Gawinski came from a GamesIndustry.biz interview. In it, Gawinski goes to great lengths in describing the Adur what Adur's a journey involving uh, arduous. Thank you. I've never journey. seen that written before. That was weird. <laughs> it threw me right off. <laughs> journey involving in bringing Cyberpunk's quality up to the expectations of the community in what he describes as an effort to, quote, fix the relationship with our players, end quote. I, I, Scott, like, I'm kind of... <laughs> dude, I'm shocked. <laughs> like, I'm really shocked at the statement that he's... I feel like he's trying to put a Band-Aid on a discussion that shouldn't have even happened. There's nothing yeah. to say. At this point, everybody's moved on and accepted the state of Cyberpunk. It wasn't just trying to fix it for the fans. It was trying to fix it for the studio because when they launched, the studio then goes from the high of being on the Witcher franchise, coming out and being beloved, to all of a sudden this massive botch of a launch, a launch that comes off. Dude, when place, that's why I, I can't, can't help it, but PlayStation took it off the store. 
the, what else do you need us to tell you? Like the game wasn't ready, yeah. right? It was bricking and consoles. That's that like, was a first, was it not? It was. And, it was the first time I've ever seen it where PlayStation themselves took it off the store and you said you cannot buy it right now because it doesn't work. Oh, and bricking consoles is just unforgivable. That's that goes so oh. far beyond just bugs in a broken game. Oh. Absolutely. I actually believe Cyberpunk on launch was way better than it was received, <clears throat> and even the first reviews were positive. People liked the concept and the idea behind the game. They didn't like how the game ran. Right? Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Man, uh it's just quote, then it became cool to not like it. <laughs> we went from hero to zero really fast. That was the tough moment. We didn't know what was happening. We knew that the game was great. We, yes, we can improve it. Yes, we need to make it make take time to do it. And we need to rebuild some stuff. Well, then the, with all of that in there from his statement alone tells me that the game still wasn't ready, Scott. Yeah, it feels like there was a huge amount of testing that just did not happen. Quality assurance that were they truly not aware that all of these bugs were about to happen as they did? It, it was just, man, that what a bizarre statement to say. Like, the proof is in the pudding. Now, granted, take a look at where we are now with Cyberpunk. People are talking about this is the best time to jump into Cyberpunk because they have addressed all the issues we had at launch. So now is the time to play the game. If you haven't played Cyberpunk, yo, the story was cool. Right? Johnny Silverhand, cool character. V, cool character. The way my story ended, though, I'm going to be honest, a little... I'm questioning a lot when it comes to the DLC coming up. That Johnny's back. <laughs> so mm. uh, it's one of those branching storylines, right? And it was it's funny because you get some of these games where a sequel comes out and goes, well, we're playing off of this ending, not that ending. And I'm like, well, yeah. I took that ending. So what are you doing to me now? So how are you going to rope that back in? But I'm definitely curious. I always said I'll never go back because I've already beat it and moved on. Here we are. Yo, I'm jumping back in in September. Like it has. It's been fixed. Kind of like it reminds me of No Man's Sky, except Hello Games didn't defend themselves saying no, it it, it was ready. <laughs> oh yeah, God. no, no, Hello Games just took that on the chin <laughs> and moved on. And granted, they 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 should just like here, right? Like this, yes. This whole interview oh, no, just seems weird. Well, nobody wants Cyberpunk to, or uh, sorry, CD Projekt Red to cease or shut Not down or be hindered or hurt by this in their f- future. It's because everybody loves CD Projekt Red. Let's yeah. restore them back to where they were. And this is not helping. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. This uh, perhaps is the sentiment Gilwinski points towards in the interview, a rough road to a much needed second chance. Quote, after the release, it was tough, but I knew that we had the same people. The gamers are the same. We just need to fix our relationship. The only thing we can truly do is just deliver what we are capable of and that's the thing we're not saying that they weren't capable they were, we were just saying mm. that they weren't ready that's the difference right yeah i agree with that though they deliver what you can what you're capable of and let it speak for itself that's yeah. the only way i think you're going to dig out of it and i think now we're out of state with cyberpunk that they are able to go in have it updated and this is the way we are now with games dude what game launches at this point and says here is a day one patch Every game comes out with a day one patch now. Like, it's just automatic, right? Oh, even Final Fantasy, I believe, when they said they would not have a day one patch, reversed that and had a day one patch. That is just the world we live in. It is. I I thought they didn't, though, so I might be wrong on stating that. I don't recall getting a day one patch, but that might just be me. So I may have missed it because it just automatically updates in the background. So I might have missed it altogether. Hmm. Yeah, Scott, let's get into something I'm working on right now in uh, playing is some PSVR 2. That's right. I'm playing my PlayStation VR 2 right now. So stay tuned on that one. Will eventually be compatible with PC, claims Windows Drivers Creator. I don't think this is going to work, Scott. <laughs> I have my Rift S right next to me. This uh, Could this be my upgrade to a PlayStation VR? Maybe, right? Chris Scullion over at VGC says, it's possible to make PlayStation VR 2 compatible with pc the creator of playstation vr windows drivers has claimed the ivory driver is a piece of steam software which adds custom drivers for other non-pc headsets such as playstation vr gear vr or google daydream 
This allows players to connect these headsets to their PC and use them to play Steam VR games without having to buy a separate dedicated PC VR headset. Since the launch of PlayStation VR in February, Ivory has been trying to determine whether it's possible to make Sony's new headset compatible with VR on PC too. Now, after, year, after four months, it's come to the conclusion that it is indeed possible to use PlayStation VR 2 on PC, but that it will require more work and likely need extra custom hard made hardware. <laughs> Yikes. Quote, PSVR 2 was blocking VR modes by saying it couldn't do Steam, digital Steam compression. I retweeted, this is all coming via Twitter, Scott, which is just mind-blowing. <laughs> Yo, Sony's going to catch up on this? And Again. They're like, nah, they're going to block you, man. Oh, it's again the world we live in. <laughs> yes, it is. We continue on. We modified an AMD open source Linux GPU driver to force the DSC. Now we know how to put the PSVR 2 into VR mode so we can design some hardware to do it on Windows. Quote, can PSVR be used on PC? PSVR 2 be used on PC? Yes. End quote. Scott, how long do you think this is actually functional before Sony comes in and says, nah, that, that ain't happening? <laughs> I am I suspect it's happening quickly. Uh, Sony may already have conversations about this happening because I, I suspect if this is capable, um, this may be just something Sony is planning to bring forward. At some point, they go, check out PlayStation games on PC. That would be kind of strange because they've been cagey about going to PC. But I feel like that's changing. The child is changing on that. It is starting to change, right? We are starting to see God of War, Drake, uh, Uncharted come over. Even Horizon came over to PC. Will we get the PSVR 2 lineup as well coming over to PC? Which then, yeah, Sony's not going to let somebody else come in and go, hey, you're going to play it this way on our platform. Like, that's not, that's not a Sony yeah. move, right? Where I feel it's more of like an Xbox thing going hey we'll just put our hands out everywhere and say yeah you can play the play everywhere you yeah exactly right so it is noted that due to sony's design choices an extra piece of hardware will be needed to get psvr2 running on pc quote everyone will need an adapter an adapter from some amd users still on linux it ex it explained to another follower quote that adapter doesn't exist yet we have, <laughs> there we go. We have to design and build one. Then hopefully some hardware company will pick it up and mass produce it, end quote. Scott, this sounds like it's uh, it's still far far off. We're, we're far away from getting yeah. this. <laughs> oh, I just had the thought, well, perhaps PlayStation, if they're not planning on doing it, maybe they are now. This is one way of getting a job. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of the hacking console, or the the arms race between hackers and companies you know eventually yep. the best hacker just gets a job at the company well, and would that's you... where i see this going if it is quite <laughs> successful yeah scott we were talking about the crossover between movies and television and gaming here we go again an among us animated series is coming but who is the imposter grant taylor hill over at insider mm -hmm. gaming is it green is it red is it that weird canon or cyan kind of shade that nobody can ever identify correctly? <laughs> it's sea foam. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have any kind of release window just yet, but it has been revealed that the Among Us, the absolute smash hit of an indie game that took the world by storm following its release in 2018. I feel like it took like two or three years to pick up Steam, but it got there. Is getting an animated mm. series. It has been said that an all new production will be based around the core premise of the game itself, which sees a crew of hapless uh, space explorers running around a ship and performing several tasks while being hunted by aliens that have come to the come to host one or more crewmates. This is Scott. How do you feel about this? Oh, uh, it's it sounds kind of wacky on its face. Among <laughs> Us kind of coming into the, but think about the premise of the game here. This is yep. uh, been done before several times. It's called The Thing, <laughs> uh, and it's go. almost exactly the concept. One of us is not as we appear. No, for sure. Yo, we played this a lot. Um, it was, it was we had a ton of fun. It's a, it was a great game. I feel like it kind of came and went. I think I'm sure some people are still playing it. It was just nature of what we do. We always tend to quickly move on, unfortunately, sometimes, right? But it's one of those hmm, interesting take that they want to grab this IP. We even saw at one point the Epic Games themselves take it and put it into Fortnite without talking yeah. to the team about Among Us and just kind of whatever. I remember seeing a tweet from Among Us going, hey, 
Epic uh, would be nice if we talked a little. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> like, it was one of those, uh-oh. They flat out just kind of took your idea and put it into Fortnite. Never even asked. Um, yeah. It was weird. It was weird to see. But now we're getting a, a, an animated series. Okay. Uh, Scott, are you going to check it out? I am very curious. Yeah. If this comes to fruition, I will be checking this out. I'm not sure how to get to it, though. Fair enough. I uh, well, it's not really nothing else is really known about it. Just that it's on on in production or it's coming. So, yeah, very little is known. We'll probably hear more. I'm probably not going to check it out if I'm being honest. That's no. just me. Nope. But what I will check out is Bandai Namco will be hosting its own summer showcase from um, Anime Expo in 2020 for 2023. This is Kelsey Gaynor over at VG247. Mm-hmm. That's right. The summer of showcases isn't over just yet. Man, oh man, it keeps going, Scott. Uh, if there are still few. <laughs> yeah, there there definitely are. Uh, if you're hoping to catch Bandai Namco's Summer Showcase live, you'll be able to tune in on Ju- July 1st, Scott, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Or 4... Th- this is, there's a typo here somewhere, Scott. We got 7.30 yeah, this- p.m. as well as 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Mm, something's wrong. <laughs> I'm going to say it's 4.30 <laughs> p.m. Eastern. It was probably when we'll be able to catch that. We'll see what comes out of them. Do, uh, I expect Tekken to be there just because that's a big push for them this year. Otherwise, any hopes, Scott? Mm, not particularly. No, I don't really have too much that I can think of that would jump out. Soul Calibur is my fighter. Yeah. But Soul Calibur 6, I actually just bought. I don't know if there will be a 7. Um, huh, fair enough. Really? Although we're seeing a re- we're seeing a resurgence <laughs> of the Street Fighter attack in, so yep. it's unclear if there is going to be a new Soul Calibur. But I've not seen or heard any mention of Soul Calibur in so long. It's really gone quiet, hasn't it? Yeah, we've got uh, Street Fighter Six out. We got a new Tekken coming out. Mortal Kombat One is coming out. We have Riot working on Project L, which is their fighter. Like, there's a lot of resurgence right now in the fighting genre, making its way up. I am highly anticipating. My, uh, Mortal Kombat 1. I cannot wait to jump back into that world. I saw they had a test, a beta test over the weekend. I was like, man, I missed out mm-hmm. on that one. My weekend was pretty busy. This weekend is no different. But maybe, do you think we'll see anything on Elden Ring? Oh, there's always the possibility there. <laughs> um, I don't I don't remember what the last state of, is there a conversation to do with DLC? I can't remember the last that conversation was left off. Because uh, at first there was, and then there wasn't. But there was. it looked like there was planned yeah Content. well there is dlc on the way a right? time to announce it <laughs> yeah i, but just, we just I don't, don't recall much. i don't yeah i don't recall any of the details to do with it Mm-mm. i think there was just a an acceptance yes you yeah. do see big empty places where dlc could go <laughs> yeah yeah there's a there's a few of them definitely but there's also a few games out today scott what do we have we have AEW Fight Forever. That's on PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, XS, the Switch, and PC. And Lara Croft Collection is on the Switch. You interested in that collection? I am, actually. It's been so long since I played a good, well, we'll say Lara Croft game. Ah, uh, man. Did you like the reboot of the franchise? I did. I, hmm, you know, I'm not certain which ones I've played now and which ones I haven't because there's one of the three that I'm missing. Probably the latest one. That's where uh, that's my window. That's the one I missed too. Got in the first one, the reboot of the first one, which actually introduced multiplayer, which kind of surprised a lot of people. It was weird, but it was really good. It was good. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I know some really didn't feel it was necessary to put it in, which was kind of one of those. I feel like you're grasping to extend the life of the Tomb Raider game. And that's kind of where it was, but it was a solid, solid game. I had a good time. I played it for quite a while, actually, surprisingly enough. And then uh, I just I mentioned to you that I deleted all my DVR stuff on Xbox. That yeah, includes yeah. a whole lot of me destroying that game online. <laughs> that was so good. Yeah, it was it was a fun game to play. That's for sure. So I don't know. We do know that Crystal right now is working on another one of Tomb Raider. So but it's probably going to join uh, Eclipse though and come out in 2026 or 2028 somewhere mm-hmm. around there I think we're not years... for a long time <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. no I think we're definitely a, a ways off before we get anything out of the, the new one because they're also working on um, we just talked about yesterday Scott well, who else are they helping right now with their with one of their titles uh, it was an Xbox studio oh, Scott why am I going blank here <laughs> Oh, I know it's gonna escape me. It'll probably come back to me tomorrow. That's when we'll be back, of course. Somebody was, 
you can join Helping us with perfect dark perhaps? yeah that's what it is thank you yes <laughs> thank you feel so much better there now we can leave the show everybody thank you for hanging out with us it's been itg daily we'll be back tomorrow i'm drew that's scott we'll see you inside the game <laughs>